Hello everyone, welcome to the 2D game tutorial. My name is Kevin, and I will be helping you through these first two parts of the tutorial. In this series, we are going to teach you how to make a basic, top-down 2D hack and slash that is designed to teach you how to put everything that you've learned from labs together. In this episode, we will be going through two things. First, I'm going to show you what the completed project looks like so you know what our end goal should look like. And second, I'm going to show you the project setup and introduce you to some of the assets we've already made for you. This is the start menu for our version of the hack and slash. Here's the player, and here's an enemy that we will create later. As you can see, the player can move in four directions and attack in four directions. Uh, we also get chased by that ghost that you saw earlier when we get too close. There should be another one over here. And he will just chase us down. And then when it touches us, it explodes on impact. As you can see, it deals damage, and this UI slider up top diminishes when we lose health. But if we find a chest like this one, and pick up this health potion, should increase it back to full. Now, towards the end of this level, you will see this red area. This red area is what helps us end the game and transition to the end game. By clicking the try again button, we go back to the main menu and we can do it all over again. All right. Now that you've seen the end goal, let's look at the start of the project. When you open up the starting projects that you downloaded from Git, your screen should look something like this with five areas. In the top left is a scene view, which you can navigate by holding down Alt and clicking and dragging. When we click on things, we can edit them, and it allows us to visualize what the game would look like. In the bottom left is the game view. This is what you will see if you click the play button, and what you will use to test your game. Earlier I had it maximized on play, so when you press that, it should full screen the game. Like this. It's often used so that we don't have it on maximize on play. It's better this way. So that when we press play, we can actually see all these other fields and edit things uh, freely. To the top, to the right of the scene, is um, the hierarchy, which has four objects that we added. Underneath that is a project folder with a bunch of subfolders. These have assets which will help us make the game. The animations folder holds animations for both the enemy and player. Gizmos holds the cinema machine. Prefabs is what we will be using to make copies of game objects that we already made. Uh, this will make copying those prefabs and just adding them a lot faster. Scenes is where we will hold all our scenes, such as the main menu scene and the end scene. Scripts is where we hold the C-sharp scripts, uh, which make the game playable. Uh, SFX is where we hold the sound effects. Sprites holds all the sprites that we've made for you, and uh, Tune Explosions is just another import that we got for Explosions. Uh, that's all for the folders. Uh, and then to the far, far right, we have the Inspector, which holds information and components for game objects, and we'll be using this constantly for the player and enemy values. Um, yeah. That's all for this video. In the next one, we will be creating the player and some functionalities.